let me start by discussing you know, briefly what happened in 2005. The five major oil companies, through their CEOs, said that they didn't need any incentives to explore for oil. Period. End of discussion. So I thought it was important to get that on the record, to compare it to their views now. And of course, last week in the Senate and Finance Committee, uh, on which I'm honored to serve, we got a very different uh, story. In effect, the CEOs did an about face, and frankly, Mr. President, they did it with a pretty straight face. Each of them defended the $2 billion a year in tax breaks that they specifically get for exploration and drilling. We are talking about industry-specific you know, tax breaks, and the five major oil companies who said they didn't need them in 2005, and in fact basically said they didn't even get them, now say somehow if they don't continue to uh, get them, we are going to have enormous uh, economic problems. Now, these are not just plain old tax breaks. How many businesses do we know have expenses for oil drilling that aren't in the oil uh, business? At the Finance Committee last week, the CEO of Chevron said that intangible, the intangible drilling tax break was like the research and development tax credit that all other American companies get. Mr. President, that's not accurate. First of all, as I reminded that CEO, oil companies also get the R&D tax credit. When they have legitimate R&D expenses, they can claim the credit. If intangible drilling costs were just like research costs for the oil industry, they would be getting two tax breaks for the same thing. That would be double dipping at taxpayer expense. In reality, as the major oil companies know, building access roads to bring in drilling rigs, which is the kind of thing that is covered by the intangible drilling provision, is nothing like the research and development tax incentive. It's the cost of doing business in their major business drilling for oil. What's more, the tax breaks for these kinds of expenses are usually spread out over a number of years, but with expensing, Mr. President, of drilling costs, the oil companies get to write off these costs in the first year. They not only get extra tax breaks that other companies don't get, they also get to claim these breaks sooner than would other types of businesses. Mr. President, it simply defies old-fashioned common sense to claim that the tax incentives that oil companies get for exploration and drilling costs, which they didn't need when oil was $55 a barrel, somehow today become essential when oil is at $100 a barrel. So the question then is, what's changed from 2005 to now to continue justifying providing these major uh, companies with taxpayer subsidies? Last week at the Finance Committee, we heard from the CEOs that oil was getting harder and harder to find and that they faced increased global competition. Now, if anything, U.S. oil supplies and prices are less tied to the global market now, and new oil supplies are easier to find than they were in 2005. The location and technology for getting oil and gas, especially from these onshore shale formations, has not only dramatically increased U.S. oil and gas reserves, but the technology is now sufficiently well established that U.S. oil and gas production is rising and rising rapidly as a result. According to a recent analysis by the U.S. Energy Information Agency, oil production from the Barnett Shale Formation in Texas, literally in the backyards of the headquarters of some of the companies we heard from last week in the Finance Committee, uh, oil production uh, from that uh, Barnett Shale Formation in Texas has tripled since 2005. In North Dakota, oil production from shale has gone from next to zero in 2005 to 240,000 barrels per day and is expected to continue to grow. In fact, the total U.S. oil production has increased over 10% since hitting its low point in 2008. 
And the Energy Information Agency projects that because of increased production in oil shale and in the Gulf of Mexico and other sources, it's going to continue to grow. Last point, Mr. President, the Senate will certainly be hearing arguments that the loss of these tax breaks is going to drive up the price at the pump. At the 2005 hearing, I also asked the CEOs about ending these tax breaks on their companies, and several of them said it wouldn't affect them or it would only affect them minimally. Again, common sense would tell you that major oil companies earning combined uh, profits of close to $32 billion in a single fiscal quarter would not suffer a big economic impact from the loss of those industry-specific tax breaks that I have been uh, talking about. And they're certainly not going to stop doing business with prices at $100 uh, a barrel. It's simply not credible to think that these companies would significantly change their investment decisions if they lost these tax breaks, and the Congressional Research Service in a report last week concluded exactly the same thing.